Today we are taking a first look at the brand new Handsmaker D1 Ultra, the first dual laser I have ever shown on this channel, featuring a 30 watt fiber laser and a 20 watt diode laser, meaning the possibilities of what you can create from one single machine is extremely vast. Now in this video we're going to be covering off the specifications of the machine, its fancy features, what it can actually produce plus the software and ultimately my experience with it. But before we dive into all of that, for those who may not be familiar, let me quickly just cover off why you would actually want two lasers in one particular unit. Now when it comes to lasers that are available for consumers for doing different types of projects, there are quite a few options around. You have diode lasers, infrared lasers, fiber lasers, fiber MOPA lasers, CO2 lasers, UV lasers, and I've probably forgot another one as well. Now ultimately the reason that there are so many different options is because they all have different wavelengths or different properties ultimately meaning that you can interact with certain materials on different types of lasers. For example, the advantages of a diode laser or a CO2 laser is that they can engrave and cut wood. Whereas a fiber laser, for example, it's great on metal, but it is terrible on wood. So by combining two of the lasers together, it just broadens the possibilities of what you can produce with one single unit. And some of the big advantages of doing this means that you don't have to do things like change over the head of the laser, change over different lenses, everything is all built in. And ultimately that does mean that it has some major advantages as well in terms of speed. For example, a typical diode laser unit looks something like this. It has a bit of weight to it. When you attach it to the machine, it has to move back and forth. Because of throwing that weight around, it is ultimately limited to the top speed that it can do and also has to accelerate and decelerate down, causing some issues with the um, engraving itself, often burning on the edges. Now, because both of these lasers are contained in a Galvo style laser, where it is the mirrors operating at high speed, it's not having to throw that weight around. So even though it's a diode laser, which are typically associated with lower speed, Speeds, it does mean that you can hit higher speeds as a result of this setup. And that is ultimately why they have combined a diode laser with a fiber laser in the D1 Ultra. So let's move on to talk about the specifications of the machine itself. As already mentioned, it is a combination of a 30 watt fiber laser operating at 1064 nanometers and a 20 watt diode laser operating, I think it's 450 nanometers. So those are the two lasers that are combined within this unit itself. As for the actual physical unit itself, it's around 280 millimeters wide, 450 millimeters deep because you need some gap on the back for the cables and at its maximum height it is about 650 millimeters. Ultimately this part here, the main head of the laser, does move up and down. This is probably it is one of its lowest positions and that can ultimately move up just to the top of the enclosure. Now obviously the enclosure itself is fully enclosed and this is classified as a class 1 rated laser enclosure. I don't know the specifications around what that actually means but it is class one rated, apparently. In terms of the actual work area of the machine, this is 220 wide, 220 deep, and it has a height operating range of around 150 millimeters, where the head ultimately moves up and down to adjust for the focus of it. Now, in terms of the speeds that I was just mentioning, because this is a Galvo style laser, it can hit relatively high speeds. We are talking 10,000 millimeters per second. Now, those are high speeds. Do not mistake that for meaning that it can actually engrave at those speeds. That is just the maximum it can operate at. So, for example, if you are doing something that can be engraved relatively lightly at faster speeds, then you may be going up to those higher end speeds. But the reality is the engraving speed is still defined by the parameters of the material that you are trying to engrave on. It can be operated both via USB or Wi-Fi and that is across Windows, Mac, Android and iOS. So you do have a few different options in terms of connecting to this machine. And that is via its own M Plus software, which I will move on to a little bit later. Now in terms of its features or the fancy parts of it, well as well as manual focus, there is a knob on the side that you can raise it up and down with. There is also auto focus on this, not only from a single position directly underneath the lens, but it also has multi positioning. Now what this actually means in reality is that you can do things such as curved objects and it will be able to scan that curved object at multiple points and adapt the actual design that you're doing 
to the shape of the object that you are trying to engrave it on. So ultimately it does mean that you can actually wrap your design around curved surfaces such as something like this baseball here. The result wasn't great on that but ultimately it was a very cheap baseball that I just brought off Amazon and that's probably going to roll off there any second now. It also has an inbuilt camera which is multifunctional. Not only does it give you a preview of the area that you are working on so you can position your job up on the material itself, but it also allows for something called smart processing or batch processing, whatever you want to call it, which is ultimately where you can put multiple objects on the bed itself and then basically it can detect those objects and position your artwork accordingly to each object. So basically if you're trying to do multiple things like business cards or dog tags, pet tags, those type of things, it can do the hard work for you by just scanning the bed, detecting those items and repositioning everything accordingly. And this doesn't only work on the main bed itself, but also the conveyor, this thing that you can see in front of me here, which I'll move on to very shortly. So ultimately, it just allows you to speed up the process of being able to knock things out quickly without manually changing everything over all the time. Moving away from the core part of the laser itself, there is the enclosure which I just touched on a minute ago. Not only does this actually look quite nice, it opens from the sides outwards. So instead of some of the other units where they slide all the way up, ultimately this just gives you a different way of getting to your material without that always hanging over your head. Obviously it protects you from the harmful light itself. It is built in safety feature so that the software knows whether it's open or not and you can tell it whether you want it to be able to start with the doors open or closed so that can be turned on or off. There is also a key on the far side which basically means that the laser will not operate unless that key is in and turned on to the correct position. So basically if you have children around or something like that or you don't want people using the laser when you're not around you can take that key out and the laser won't be able to be accessed. And also at the back of the unit there is an inline dust extraction or fan but they also provide you with a separate unit so you can actually extract the air out at more force just ultimately keeping the inside of the unit as clean as possible and then you can take all of that dirty air and just port it outside ultimately not making your um, workshop smell or toxic fumes which is probably the uh, more harmful part of it. And on the front of the enclosure is a little Handsmaker logo, which is actually the lock for the doors, which I thought was a bit gimmicky at first, but I do actually like the way that it works. And an emergency stop on the side of the unit, should anything go wrong and you set things on fire, because at the end of the day, this is a laser, that's what happens. The unit also comes with this little digital touchscreen here, which can allow you to do certain things on the laser, like start or stop the job. So for example, if you are running this over Wi-Fi and maybe your PC or laptop isn't directly next to the laser itself, you can ultimately use this to start or stop the job itself. So let's move on from the specifications and talk about what it can actually do in terms of engraving and cutting. Now, because it is a dual laser, it is a pretty extensive list of what it can engrave on. It's probably easier for me to just put a big list up on screen. I think hands make a claim over something like 300 different types of material that it can operate with. But for the most part, the ones that you want to know about is it can engrave on wood, it's going to engrave on stone and slate, it's going to be able to mark things like paper and card, it's going to be able to do um, bamboo, it's going to be able to do, yeah, said a big long list, different types of metals, not just your softer metals like aluminium, it's also going to be able to do brasses, copper, stainless steel, titanium as well. So it is quite a large range of things that it can actually engrave including, I don't think I mentioned leather, it will do acrylic, different types of composites. It is almost an endless list that I just keep jabbering on about. So let's move on and talk about what it can actually cut through. Now, obviously, for the most part, people are interested in wood and metal. I think hands make a claim that this can cut up to 17 millimeters thick in terms of wood. Now, I haven't tested it at that deep, but do bear in mind that ultimately, when you are cutting through wood, it often means going slower and also doing multiple passes. That leads to a much higher risk of fire. So do just be careful if you are thinking of cutting thicker material on this. But as well as wood, I believe it will also cut through leather. It will cut through acrylic as well. Going over to the fiber laser, it will also cut through thin metal. 
I'll hold my hands up at this point. I haven't done as much cutting with this laser as I usually would have, but I'm hopefully going to try and fit a little bit more in before actually getting this video out. Now I will cover it off before the question comes up in the comments. Neither a diode laser or a fiber laser really work with clear materials such as glass or clear acrylic. There are ways around them where you can coat the material to help the engraving, but naturally on its own, neither of the wavelengths of those lasers work with the clear materials. So the reality is with having the dual laser, you are going to be able to achieve a lot with this particular machine in terms of the variety of options that you can engrave. Now to also help with that, there are a couple of additional accessories. We have the rotary, which you can just see in front of me there. This is a multi-style rotary that will not only take smaller objects like rings that you can engrave, but it can also take larger objects such as glasses or tumblers or your thermos drinking flasks that can also go onto this device. So again, the rotary is multifunctional, allowing you just a broader range of things that you can actually achieve with it. And the big item that is sitting on the bottom there, as mentioned earlier, is the conveyor belt. This allows your work area to go from 220 by 220 to 220 by 800 millimeters. So it does extend it quite a bit. And ultimately the joys of this is it's not only there for like single project work, but actually it's true use comes in when you are doing batch processing because you can just keep feeding items onto that conveyor belt. It will keep detecting them, keep processing them and churning them out. So if you are looking for a laser to do batch processing, that is probably one of the accessories that I would definitely recommend for it. Now I'm always honest in my reviews, despite everything being extremely well packaged, there was a small issue upon delivery. Basically the autofocus wasn't working correctly on the laser itself. Now it did take a couple of emails with their support team, they were extremely responsive and we were able to diagnose it was a loose cable in the head of the laser. Now this literally took a couple of minutes to get it fixed so it wasn't really a big issue, but as I say, I'm always transparent in these videos. But it did give me the opportunity to test their support system service which as I say was very responsive. Now I'm going to talk about the price and the launch before moving on to the software and you will understand why in a minute. Now the RRP of this unit is meant to be $4,200. Now some of you will question RRP values, I'm just giving you the facts as they are. But this is being launched on Kickstarter as a lot of products seem to be at the moment with a 50% off making it about $2,100 or around $1,600 British pounds. And that is basically for the base unit that comes with the extractor fan. And then obviously you can often purchase bundles which include extra accessories such as the conveyor belt or the rotary itself. Now regular viewers will know that I have covered Kickstarter off a few times on this channel for those who are not familiar with it. It is basically a platform where companies can put their products up nice and early almost before they've gone into full production to get extra financial backing then to deliver them to the consumers. And often what happens along that way is they will either give extra bonuses once they hit targets. For example, you may get an extra material pack that comes with the laser, but it also gives them extra time to refine the laser. If anything, needs tweaking or correcting before going into full production. And there are some risks to Kickstarters where some companies have not delivered and followed through with their promise. So at the end of the day, do your own research into the platform before committing to any product. It is the best advice that I can give you. A lot of companies are now just using Kickstarter basically as a promotional platform for their products. Even though the money is actually there and the machines are almost pretty much ready to go, as I say, they're using it just as a way to generate more interest in the product itself. So let's move on and talk about the software. And this is where my optimism and positivity about the actual laser itself comes back down to the real world. Now, like a lot of laser manufacturers at the moment, they are pushing their own proprietary software. So at the moment, this is not compatible with LiPo. I kind of do understand this a little bit because at the end of the day, the lasers are advancing almost faster than Lightburn is itself. So some of the features that are available in this laser unit obviously cannot be done in Lightburn as it stands. So to operate this, you do need their own software, which I think is called M Plus or M Plus Studio. Now, their target with this software was to make things as simple as possible for the user. So ultimately, you're not diving into too many settings, you're not getting confused with things. And in that aspect, they have actually done a good job. But from my point of view, I think they've taken it a step too far. The software itself is actually missing some key settings that you really need in order to use this laser to the best of its ability and the best of my ability. 
For example, the frequency setting for the fibrillizer is not in the software at the moment. Now this has an operating range, I think between 15 and 75, but ultimately you can't manually change that as a user. And as a result, that can impact the quality that you're getting from the jobs that you are doing. So I went to do a deep engraving on a brass coin. Because I couldn't adjust the frequency myself, the results were not that great from it. And a fairly basic feature that all laser software should have is being able to do a material test so that you can actually dial in the settings yourself for the material that you are using. Now, whilst the software does have an inbuilt material library, because this is effectively pre-production, the library itself doesn't really have a huge amount of settings in there. The ones that are in there are pretty accurate to the results, but ultimately if you're testing something a bit different or your material is a bit different from the one that is in their library, it makes it very difficult to actually dial in your settings. Now, in saying all this, they are listening to feedback. I have fed back a lot of things about things that need to be adjusted or changed in the software. And I know other users who have also put out videos have also fed back and they are listening to this. So the reason that that is important and ultimately why the benefit of doing this via a Kickstarter is we get the early version, we get the prototype. By the time it actually hits your doorstep, all those things are going to be corrected and fixed. And basically the software is going to be in a much better place by the time this actually arrives for you. So yeah, that is the low point of this review for me. Ultimately, the software probably means I haven't got as much out of the laser as I would have liked or the results haven't been as best as they could have been. Some pieces have been great, some have been a little bit sketchy, but ultimately when they fix those issues in the software, which they will be doing and have given me that assurance to say, it's going to put it in a much better place. And that probably pretty much sums up my experience with the laser. The laser itself has been brilliant. I love all the features within it. I love being able to switch between the two different lasers, the auto detection for the objects and things like that. But ultimately the software, as I say, is the lowest point for me. But fortunately, that is something that can be improved. I'm not gonna say quickly because developing software does take time, but it does at least mean that it can be developed and pushed out at a different way or a better way than obviously changes to the laser, which I am actually pretty happy with. So that is my overview and review of the Handsmaker D1 Ultra. Obviously if you've got any questions let me know in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I will also put links not only to the Kickstarter page but the actual core page for the machine itself if you want to go and check any more information out about it. But for now thank you all very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons and I will see you all on the next episode.